hoping you can see those big bass laying in there. There's a big one laying right under the tree there. Oh baby. Big boys. Nice to see good fish like that. Another one. Real shallow. Ooh. Nice small mouth. See he's been hooked before. These fish have been bait on. Alright, time to let him go. Whoa. Here we go. Got that one on. Uh, Jackal spade jig with a craw, like a floater claw trailer on it. See these claws have air pockets in them, so they they stand up. Work pretty good. Let's see if we can find another one. It's real calm tonight, but there's no sun. There's not a lot of light. Water's a little colder than it was the other day. That's a beauty. And spit the hook on this one. Look at that. Wow. Come on the flipping hook. A little river bug. That's a beautiful fish. That is a beauty. That's a good three pounds. Heavy fish. All right, let's unhook him and let him go. Pop the hook out. Some beautiful colors on that fish. He's got that real nice frog pattern. All right, let's let him go. He just gave me a shower. Well, that's okay. I deserve that. That was nice. Oh. It's flat calm tonight. No wind. I seen a few fish. A few nice ones. Here's what I got that fish on. car you can see the tip on it there it's like a three angle point but like I said before wherever that point hits is where it's gonna stick I had the little beaver rig just like that you have a hook point just coming out the other side and then you can bury the hook point in the plastic so that it becomes weed proof or snag proof but then when the fish he bites on it you got him just like that pulls right through 
these hooks, these are really made for largemouth. Although this is a, a small flipping hook, you can get 6-0 hooks, 5-0, 6-0 hooks that are monster hooks for big largemouth. If you're, you know, flipping heavy cover for big giants. Oh, that fish made the night there. I lost one. I had one other fish on the jig and I, he came off. Uh, he just came up, threw his head, and he, he threw the hook right out of his mouth. I mustn't have had a good, a good hook on it. I, 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 my jigs have lighter wire hooks than these. I do have some heavy flipping jigs, but uh, this is a heavy wire hook. Usually, if this, if, you, if they bite on that, and you you have a decent hook set, I'm using third, like 25, 30 pound braid. Uh, there's no stretch in this line. I'm using a heavy action rod. Uh, it's a Shimano Celis. You can see there. That's a medium heavy with an extra fast tip. So the extra fast tip gives you a casting accuracy when you're flipping. Uh, that really helps you. Helps your presentation that you're not spooking the fish. And these fish are very spooky. They're, this is a shallow bank here with a uh, submerged root. So. They can hear your every move in the boat, and they're very, very spooky. You've got to make long casts and stay well away from the fish so that you don't spook them. Last light, last fish. There we go. Nice one. Better small now. Nice looking fish, nice and healthy. This paler than the other one. This, the other ones I caught tonight were much darker. This fish is much lighter in color. You see his fins are all beat up. Alright, let's put him back. We had a good night. There you go. Back he goes. Woo. Just like that. That was a good night. All right, time to go home. I'm way late. That was definitely after last cast. Another tip I'll give you here for boats, even for storing them in your truck. You can see here, I have a bunch of different rods on the deck of the boat here, but I, have, I keep them in covers because when I go to put them in my rod locker, it keeps the lines from getting tangled up. Move this out of the way here. You'll see here, inside the rod locker here. I also have guards. If I have, like on that particular rod there, I have a whopper plopper rigged on it. So it's got two sets of treble hooks on it. So I'll keep that, the, the bait cover on it so the hooks don't stick in my other rods or stick in my other lines. And uh, that's definitely the way to go. The, the rod covers make it nice and easy. Especially, you need to keep your lines from tangling up. Let's hook this one back here. These are a lot of my spinning reels. You see I have all sorts of stuff rigged here. A drop shot, Texas rig. That's a swim bait rig. You can see the little swim bait here. Uh, the wacky rig. I have other rods rigged in the, in the rod locker. You would think, wow, why would you have so many rods rigged up? Well, with my work and stuff, I have very limited time to go, so you don't need all those rods, but it saves me a lot of time. If I want to change from one weight bait to the other, I won't take the time to tie it. I'll just switch rods and instantly I'm fishing again. So with, with very limited time, it helps me to have a lot of the rods rigged pre-rigged before I go. And then I'll choose what I want to take with me for what I think I'll need and I'll you know those rods I'll pack on the boat and then it makes me much more efficient when I'm fishing also and I mean I have a trawler motor and then I have a big motor so if I'm moving from spot to spot unless it's very close you know from one spot to another I won't use my trawler motor to get to that next spot I'll use my big motor I'll take my trawler motor up use the big motor and that way it, I have less wasted time between spots that I'm fishing so it makes you fish more efficiently, you know, when you only have very limited time. Uh, time is money, right? 
and unfortunately a lot of us can't get out as much as we'd like to uh, so you have to kind of manage your time you know more efficiently now I'm not talking about younger guys getting into fishing uh, you know it, it doesn't make any difference if you have one rod or 50 rods uh, you can still catch fish you don't need you know three thousand dollars worth of equipment you, you know you can get a regular pole a regular rod a regular line and hooks and still catch fish so don't be discouraged when you see these tournament guys and they've got you know a hundred different rods and you know an eighty-five thousand dollar boat you don't need that you can still catch fish trust me all right time to go home you can see my light in the background time is 8 30. definitely time for me to go home it's gonna because I, I i'm in a no wake zone so i'm gonna have to idle out of here for another 25 minutes and uh then load my boat and then drive home <laughs> all right that was a good night. Here's a look at some of the flipping baits that I brought with me. I have some speed craws here, Pivok. Uh, these are slop craws. They're thin, so for the small amount they work really well. Same with the speed craws. They're, they're small design, they're more compact. Uh, so, and these you've seen in some of my videos before, the big bite and the warmouth. Those are great. They imitate little perch and bluegill. And fish cannot stand them, especially when the t around the times when they're spawning. Uh, that's another uh, pit boss in the Okeechobee blue. Uh, these are rage, uh, have or uh, striking rage tail uh, shell crackers. They imitate little bluegills again. Same here with the big bite, the warm mouth, more bluegill imitators. Uh, these are Bass Pro Sun Perch. Uh, those again imitate small bluegill and and perch. Here's an interesting one, the bombshell turtle. It actually imitates a little turtle. Uh, they're tough to see in the packet, but it, it, it's actually a small little baby turtle. He's about two inches long. And turtles are nest raiders. Aquatic turtles are nest raiders. Bass hate them. Little craws. These are good for jig trailers. Uh, missile bait craws. Let's see, that's a 4.4 .4. missile craw. There's the white sweet beaver I caught the bass on tonight. This is the same beaver except it's in a bluegill color instead of a shad color. Uh, more missile craws. Uh, I think that's another slop craw. It's a real thin one. And vampire orange, one of my favorite colors. It's a black and red flake. Uh, there's a Berkeley pit boss, which is a craw bait again in vampire orange. And then I have another pit boss. It's a chunk. It's actually made for a jig trailer. So it's nice and short. Uh, and that's in green pumpkin. Uh, this is a rage tail menace. It's basically a, a grub body with, with two flapping tails on it. So it drop when it drops straight down, the tails flap on, the, on its way down. And these are uh, tube craws with a skirt. So that's a bigger, bigger profile bait. And that's it. Can't catch fish with that. You're not gonna catch anything. <laughs> you can see at nighttime now. Well, it's not night, but it's dark. You see my navigation lights on the boat. And then you would have both of those on when you're moving. And then you would only have the anchor light, the one in the back on when you're stationary. So if you're anchored, you would only have one light on, but when you're moving, you would have navigation lights on. You see here, my console's lit up. My navigation is lit up. This is when GPS comes in very handy. I can, uh, with the, just with the GPS, because I have known good trails saved on the GPS, I can navigate the boat in complete darkness. So I can steer around all these little coves and steer clear of shallow water and shale and all that other good stuff uh, without worrying about you know running into something at night in complete complete darkness. nice and quiet out here some old trees old growth trees you can see how big they are boat landing at night just aim for the lights <laughs>